Hi again, this is Mr. Walters, and we're discussing solubility, KSP, precipitation reactions, and uh, we're going to be continuing with that discussion. So what I'm going to be discussing uh, currently, you can find in your book on section, in section 16.6. Uh, there's, uh, I expect you to uh, use these lectures um, like you would typically use them in class. So you will be looking, listening, make sure that you take notes, good notes, pause when you need to pause, do calculations on your own, check answers as I go through them. So you need to take responsibility for uh, following through with uh, this information. Again, it's just so important that you uh, write the information and go through the problem solving technique as I do it, but just as importantly, you need to use the book. Uh, I can answer questions, but there's not gonna be a quick response back, so use the book, really important. I mentioned it before that as I go through a topic, you need to read about that topic either before we start or after, just depending on if you had an assignment, that sort of thing. So take responsibility for your education here. I'm here to help as much as I can, but we really need you to rally here. We need all of you students to rally. It's time to rally. All right, KSP. Uh, let's see, I showed you four different precipitation reactions. Uh, this is similar. I have a dilute solution of sodium nitrate, and I've got a, actually I take that back, it's a dilute solution of silver nitrate, and I've got another dilute solution of sodium chloride. So we did this earlier in an earlier video, and we saw precipitate being formed. It's a white precipitate. So let's uh, take a look here. Let's see what happens. Maybe you can make a prediction, but I will say that uh, this is dilute, so both solutions are dilute. So let's uh, add uh, one reactant to the other, stir, make sure, make sure we interact there, and notice there's no precipitation. What is going on here? Well, let me put this up, and let's, uh, let's, Think about this for a moment. We know that chemical reactions are the results of collisions. We need to collide here. We need the Ag positive to collide with the Cl minus. When they collide, we're gonna produce product here. Remember when I said that both solutions were dilute? Well, they were actually very, very, very dilute. Essentially, what happened was we combined the two solutions but the concentration of both of those ions were in such small amounts, they simply couldn't bind each other in that final test tube and come together in form of a solid precipitate. So this leads us to Q versus KSP. We've already talked about Q. Um, and we've been talking about KSP. Let's take a look over here. Notice if Q is greater than KSP. Notice we're going to see a precipitate form and then that solution would in fact be supersaturated. In other words, you would see a solid precipitate being formed as you combine the two. The uh, four examples that I gave on the earlier video are supersaturated and, um, and we saw the precipitate. One thing I will state though is that the test tube as a whole was supersaturated. Uh, there was solid along with ions, but if you withdraw the solution, I alluded to this on the other video, if you remove small amounts of the aqueous solution above the precipitate, the ions there would be saturated. The maximum amount of ions that can dissolve under that particular, those particular temperature conditions, okay? So anyway, um, notice Q is greater than KSP. We're gonna see a precipitate and that's supersaturated. What if uh, Q equals KSP? Then you're gonna see um, no precipitate, but you would in fact have a saturated solution. Now, if you do have a perfectly saturated solution, perfectly saturated, 
adding small amounts of both ions, small amounts, they would come together and form precipitate. And you'd see a little flake of uh, precipitate being produced. So saturated Q equals KSP, no precipitate uh, visual. What if Q is less than KSP? Notice uh, that's going to be unsaturated and there's going to be no precipitate. So let's take a look at an example here. Excuse me. All right. Let's say that we're adding silver nitrate aqueous plus sodium chloride, similar to what I just did. But now we need to look at the numbers. Uh, we have a uh, molarity here of the silver nitrate at 1 times 10 to the negative 6, and we have 100 mils of that. Notice here we have 1 times 10 to the negative 6 big M of uh, sodium chloride, and we have 100 mils of that. Okay? So what we're going to do is combine these, and we're going to produce a uh, solution now that is going to be 100 plus 100, 200 mils. What we want to do here is figure out the concentration of this I. Notice this is a Q value, and notice we're not necessarily at equilibrium. If we go over here, we want to figure out this value and compare it to the KSP value with, there's the KSP value. So that's the point here. Well, uh, let's do that. I want you guys to figure out, first of all, figure out the number of moles of Ag positive present in this solution. So I just want the number of moles present. Then figure out the number of moles present here. So, um, if you recall, big M times V equals moles. Use this over and over and over again. So, molarity in moles per liter times volume in liters, of course. Notice that cancels and we're left with moles. So, let's figure out the moles of Ag positive. All we're going to do is plug uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, moles per liter into here and then notice originally now originally we haven't added these solutions yet we will deal with that in a moment but we've got a uh, hundred or um, 100 mils or 0 0.100 uh, liters here at the beginning so we'll times that uh, liters are going to cancel and if I'm not mistaken we're going to have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6, uh, excuse me, 10 to the negative 7 moles of silver ions. So that's moles of silver ion. Excuse me, I need a different color. I got a feeling you're not going to be able to see uh, that red very well. So this is the moles of uh, silver ions present. Now um, remember, this ionizes in a one-to-one -one relationship. So, uh, so we've got this many moles here of silver ions. Of course, we'd have the same number of moles of nitrate ions, but we're not concerned about the nitrate ions. Well, if you notice, We've got the same molar quantity of uh, NaCl that we had for this. So let's, uh, here's our Q, and we've got a molar quantity here. Uh, the number of moles here is going to equal uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, that's moles. So we've got 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7 moles. Um, now, remember we've added both of these quantities to here, and now we've got 200.0 mils of total solution here. 
So remember, brackets are moles per liter, so we need to realize that uh, we now have added these. We do have that many moles in a new volume now, and that new volume is 0 0.200 liters, and of course, it's the same value here, 1.0 times 10 to the negative seventh moles of Cl minus, divided by 0 0.200 liters. So go ahead and figure out Go ahead and figure out what the Q value is. All right, so again, uh, where did the 200 come from? I figured out the new molarity after I added these two together. Of course, the number of moles didn't change because the number of moles here has to be identical as in here. The number of moles of uh, Ag positive has to be identical, as well as the number of moles of, uh, because of these concentrations here, they have to be identical here. So what is the Q value? Q equals 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13. So let's compare Q to Ksp. So take a look here. Notice that's 10 to the negative 13th here. So Q is uh, 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13th. Look at Ksp. You've got to find that number and there it is. Notice Q is less than Ksp and what happened was no precipitate was formed when I added those two so solutions together. And what we have is an unsaturated solution which has small amounts, very small amounts of Ag positive, very small amounts of Cl minus. And notice these are aqueous, so these are spread out tremendously and they simply are too far apart to come together and form a solid precipitate. Of course, we do have spectator ions in here as well. Notice nitrates are floating around. Notice Cl minuses are, or um, I'm sorry, notice uh, sodium ions are floating around as spectator ions as well. I'm not showing those just for simplicity purposes. Of course, water is by far the most abundant species in this, and the water would be hydrating these uh, ions in this fashion, where the highly electronegative oxygen atom uh, would, would cozy up nice and close with the positive charge, and then of course the waters uh, would reverse themselves uh, here around this negative, where the hydrogens, which are partially positive, will flip-flop around its magnetic attraction and hydrate in the opposite orientation. All right, so that's a uh, good practice question. Remember, all you're gonna do with these sort of questions is you're gonna figure out the Q value and notice that these are initial concentrations. Typically, what you're gonna need to do is look at each individually, figure out the number of moles present. And again, big MV equals moles. Figure out the number of moles present and you're gonna plug that in here. There's my number of moles of Ag positive right here. Uh, notice we can figure out the number of moles present here as well. Notice it happens to be the same amount because I've got the same volume and the same concentration. Remember, volumes are additive, so 100 plus 100 is 200 mils total. So let's convert that to liters and then let's figure out the Q value and simply compare to a known quantity. So there's an important problem. There's, other, there's another one or two in the book I want you to take a look at uh, as well. All right.